Uh, yeah, I think that you credit what credit is due. This, uh, this crisis center is going to be a boon to, to this problem. Um, I also think that across the city, there's a lot of people in this community that are being asked to do the job they are not trained for. Police officers, teachers, they are asked to deal with an emotional distress that they are not prepared for. Uh, there are only six social workers in the LCS system. Okay, So what we have to deal with here is let's address this problem from when it starts. Okay, And that is in our youth. And like what, what Dr. Twitty was saying before, there are 62 economically disadvantaged, 62% uh, of economically disadvantaged youth in our LCS system. Okay, That will only lead to this sort of mental distress. So what we need to do is we need to boost uh, the services that are provided to our youth, and over time, that will that will uh, work. Um, so first, the thing I want to bring attention to is we recently got some funding from our delegates and our senators for a regional crisis receiving center here in Lynchburg. That's going to not only impact the city, but it's also going to impact the surrounding county. And that's going to be a huge benefit for us when we get there. So I want to thank the Republicans that led the way to get this done for our city because we need that. Um, second, I've been involved in these processes many times. I'm a former Lynchburg fire captain, I'm still a paramedic, and I know how these TDO and ECO processes work and they are taxing on the entire system. So the answer that we have is what the state has provided us, the funding that's coming for this regional crisis center. That is the next best step that we can take and we're headed in that direction and I look forward to the outcome. So I think you know, the role that City Council plays is a really important one. We have the opportunity to be a convener across the community. So we can bring together partners like Centra and Horizon, the Sheriff's Office, the Police Department. Um, but a lot of this does live, and I say this with, with affection and respect, with the state. Um, we don't have enough beds in, in our state mental health system. We don't have enough. And so I, I, I'm excited to partner with our, our state delegation uh, here from Lynchburg, and right now, of course, we have Senator Newman, Senator Peek, and Delegate Walker um, to work with them and legislators across the state to actually increase both the number of beds we have in our, in our mental health system, but also funding from the state uh, for uh, additional police officers for each locality, because again, a lot of our funding is limited. We get a lot of mandates from the state, but not the funding to do it. So we need, frankly, more funding from the state. We're talking about proficiency. When we begin to talk about uh, education and, and, and measures of how well kids are um, mastering concepts, um, I'm speaking to the educators in the room. Um, essentially, we're talking about um, two major components. We're talking about the, uh, the instructional component of it, introducing a concept, and also um, the reinforcement of, of that concept both play their significant role in leading a young person to mastering a concept. So when they're, when they're tested on their proficiency, they can actually show that they have mastered that concept. Um, we have awesome teachers here in the city who do a great job from an instructional standpoint. We have challenges when we talk about the reinforcement component because that's where the parent, the family, the community comes in place. We know that we have certain children here in the city that may not have the support directly from a parent, um, whether that be they're not available due to the fact they're working two jobs, or, or they don't have the ability to actually work with them with the concepts, but we have plenty of organizations here in the city um, that have committed workers that can come into place to be able to supplement that level of support to ensure that they have that, that concept reinforcement. So when they get back into the classroom, they can be able to perform at, 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 at proficiency level. And when it's time for their aptitude to be measured, um, we can be able to see an increase um, in numbers by way of their ability to understand the information that's being presented before them. So if there's an investment to be made, I think it's on the back end to be able to ensure that we have a certain level of concept reinforcement that's coming forth by way of collaborations we can make in the city and the resources that we have here to close in on that gap. But Mr. Tweedy said it's correct, not all kids can go to private school. And that's what's so sad about the 60% of students that are going to LCS right now who don't have another option. Their parents are just as frustrated as every other parent in this city that they can't homeschool or private school their kids and that their children are suffering. The teachers are frustrated, they're walking out. 
because they don't get the support from the administration that they need. They don't have the support um, uh, roles in the classroom. We have good teachers who love these children, who love these children who come from homes where there's not a parent at home to do homework with them. We have teachers who are mother, father, counselor, nurse, friend, and educator. Plenty of great teachers, and they're walking out because they're not getting what they need in the classroom, and the children are suffering. And as a mother, it's unacceptable. My heart is burdened for every one of the 60% of those students that have no other option, and we've got to do that.